Hello guys, Zeddy here with another World of Warships ship spotlight brought to you by the Batani.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Minikaze class destroyer. We're going to check into the roles it played in the history books as well as give you some tips and tricks when using it in game. Construction of the Minikaze class destroyer started in 1918, and they were designed to be state of the art. She was to be fast and to escort the new Amagi class battlecruiser. Unfortunately, the Amagi was never actually completed due to the Washington Naval Treaty. Regardless of the Amagi's fate, Japan continued to produce a total of 15 Minikaze class destroyers due to the fact that their current fleet was aging. Like many ships built in this time frame, the Minikaze found itself stuck between two eras. As World War II approached, the now aging Minikaze and her sister ships would primarily play secondary roles, such as sub patrol, minesweeping, and carrier escort. A few of the ships in this class took on some specialized roles, such as running the Tokyo Express. This was a shipping route in which fast destroyers were to deliver men and supplies to the front lines under the cover of night. One of these destroyers even found herself modified to launch the Catan Man Torpedo, Japan's second most successful suicide bombing program, but no records can be found that she ever launched a Catan against enemy ships. By war's end, most of the ships had either been sunk by the Allied sub force, and those that made it through were eventually scuttled or scrapped. In the end, regardless of the age, the Minikaze class destroyer played a crucial role in the Japanese war effort. Alright guys, let's talk a little bit about gameplay. At one time, the Minikaze was quite possibly the best destroyer in the game. I loved playing it and I hated being up against it. Before the game went to full launch, the Minikaze had an amazing torp range of almost 10k. This allowed captains to launch torps at unsuspecting ships and never been seen. So what happened? Well, Wargames took a nerf bat to it and hit it hard. In the current layout, you'll find that you have four 122mm cannons, three torpedo launchers with two torpedoes each, and a nice top speed of 39.5 knots. The nerf hit this boat so badly because it's not a gunship. In fact, I would never use the guns unless you have that little bit of HP to crack through. They simply turn too slow and have a terrible reloading time. The current torpedoes only go 7k. That's a whopping 3k less than their previous range. That makes the captain have to be a little bit more cunning because the ship can be detected at 6.2k. That leaves a very, very narrow corridor to get your torps off and not be discovered. Now, for the person that's going to keep this ship around, a fully skilled captain can reduce that detection range to 5.4k, giving you a little bit more breathing room. Piloting the Minikaze is going to require more skills and is no longer the fire and forget boat it once was. You'll have to become more aggressive and take more risks. I have found that starting in the American Destroyer line has really helped with that aggressive playstyle that I have developed, and I think it is the reason why I have become so good in the Minikaze. To wrap things up, I think that Wargames has made the right choice in nerfing the Minikaze. They have made the ship so that it requires more skill on the player's part. The adjustment also levels out the playing field. You no longer have an overpowered destroyer in a tier 5 match. If you have the port slot, keep it. It's a fun ship. I really enjoyed jumping back into it just for these videos. Well guys, that ends this edition of Ship Spotlight, and thanks for checking it out. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like, and subs never hurt. As always, for the latest in gaming, news, articles, and entertainment, don't forget to click the link below and visit thematani.com. Thanks again, enjoy the grind, and have a great day.